Hey guys, Josiah here with Aesthetics Fitness. As you can probably tell, we're doing something a little different in today's episode. I've actually got Kaiser Johnson on the show here. He is an actor and athlete, and I'm going to be talking to him a little bit. He's a fellow enthusiast specifically in the areas of functional fitness. He's run Spartan races, done Tough Mudders, tried out for American Ninja Warrior, and has had some injuries along the way that he's also recovered from. So specifically in today's episode, I'm going to be talking to him about injury recovery, getting back on top of your training, and also just functional fitness, things he recommends doing if you really want to build functional strength in your training routine. So, Kaiser Johnson, welcome to the program. Well, thanks for having me. Um, you might occasionally hear some yelling in the background because be so um, she uh, you know doesn't know that she's not part of the interview too sometimes. So <laughs> your, your um, video cut out temporarily, but I believe what you said is you just had a newborn baby. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we will take that as it comes. So uh, okay. Right. I did uh, a pretty great job, if I do say so myself, introducing yourself, but I would, yeah, I'm would i sure everyone would like to hear yourself sort of tell us about your accomplishments. Obviously, you're wearing about eight dozen medals around your neck, but... Uh, oh, I, I totally forgot I even had these on. This is just, you know, some stuff from, from you know, a few times of doing a couple of races, that's all, you know, and... Uh, getting a couple of trifectas and, you know, from Spartan race and competing in the world championships and stuff like that. No big deal. Um, but So is wearing <laughs> all these medals basically the equivalent of like a, a dentist with their eight degrees behind their Yeah, their this table? is basically my version of having degrees. I don't have any really. So this is <laughs> un uneducated. It's just, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, no. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, like you said, uh, I, it's, sorry, I'm going to get all the rest of these at once. That's, that sounds good. <laughs> There we go. That's just silly. Um, so yeah, so um, I'm yeah, that's right. I'm I'm, I'm an actor, uh, athlete. Uh, I have competed in Spartan races on the Spartan TV show, um, and uh, yeah, competed at the uh, regional qualifiers for uh, American Ninja Warrior, uh, and yeah, really into uh, functional fitness and and having. Uh, uh, recovered from some you know, fairly major uh, injuries in in training and stuff like that. Um, really appreciate stuff that helps um, work towards maintaining and keeping a, a healthy um, level of fitness, and then uh, stuff that that you know can continue to keep you healthy and fit without uh, putting yourself at risk for a long time. So, and I also think I forgot to mention that you just had a book about fitness come out actually as well. That's right. That's right. I have a book. It's called uh, Grit and Glory, Cross-Training Your Body and Soul. Uh, and it's about the connection between, uh, you know, mind, body, spirit, the whole the whole thing of, of really um, how all of you as a person is meant to work together in, in not just, uh, you know, uh, uh, having your life split up into parts, but all as a whole. So, and yeah. Basically, and in, that, in that training, you have to incorporate every area of your, of your existence, not just necessarily, you know, ignoring physical or or mental or emotional or fit or spiritual any element of that but combine it all into into really training your whole whole person right being being a, a whole person yeah exactly and training as a whole person so gotcha awesome well guys definitely check out that book if you ever get the chance i think it's on amazon is that right it is yep amazon yeah it is, you can get it there so cool yeah well, to get down to the topics of today, um, specifically, let's talk a little bit about functional training because I've mentioned, I've done some yeah. conversations and topics about that on the channel before, probably not as much as some people with a more functional mindset would like. So let's hear a little bit from you. Is there anything, if, if someone's, you know, they've been maybe training just for aesthetics or they're just new to training in general and they want to make sure that they are, you know, they're training in a way that's going to give them skills that they can use on a on a daily basis or things that they can use you know if they're a person who really cares about preparedness physically for disasters things that they will use that give them uh, basically just extra additional skills that they can use in their daily life yeah I think I mean um, I remember you know so I, I've not only trained myself for you know Spartan races and that sure. kind of thing um, and trained with other Spartan racers uh, but also helped in, in training other people for Spartan races and uh, Spartan races do it, it is really sort of a cross training platform, not like a cross fit platform, but a mm -hmm. cross training platform where you're really getting your body to do a lot of things that are good for it to be able to do. Um, and I think the biggest things for just functional fitness and fitness that'll last a lifetime um, is is well, I can break it up into like certain exercises and stuff. But I, I think you know you've got five main com uh, uh, components of fitness. Is that right? So you've got strength. Um, 
speed, endurance, uh, and, uh, and flexibility. And there's one more that I'm forgetting right now, but it's in the book. Anyway, um, so I think all of those are, are important things. Um, and those are how you see people succeed in, uh, in, in obstacle racing. Uh, but it's also how you see people just be all around, uh, you know, functional, uh, athletes and functional human beings. And so when it comes down to it, you know, when I think about, um, the simplest way to kind of categorize uh, how to train, I think if you're able to run uphill, mm-hmm. if you're able to, uh, and run downhill too, um, just, you know, work with terrain. Um, and that's, I think a major component uh, of that being able to uh, endure, to, to be able to work out at an elevated heart rate for beyond 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think something that's, that's important too. Um, as far as strength goes, being able to move your own body weight, uh, you know, when it comes to pull-ups and push-ups and that kind of thing, being able to execute those kind of, of exercises, uh, I think those are really functional things to be able to do uh, where you're moving your own body weight. Um, and, you know, then there are basic sort of criteria and qualifications for flexibility and that kind of thing, you know, being able to touch your toes, being able to, you know, put an arm behind your back and, and all this kind of stuff. But I think, and, and there are ways of, of, of training all that, but those are sort of just some, some good like benchmarks to go, can I lift my body up and, you know, right. and up, I, can I carry my own weight on my shoulders, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, various things like that. Because that's going to be something that's obviously very useful in day-to-day situations. You know, you don't usually go out and suddenly, you know, you're at your job and your boss says, hey, get under this barbell and, and bench press 300 pounds. You know, that's not something right. that's going to happen. But in a lot, there are a lot of situations where either either for, you know, necessity or just because it would be more convenient to, you know, like you said, lifting your own body, being able to basically muscle up if you're getting out of the water at the lake and need to get up onto the dock, things like that, as opposed to having to mm-hmm. walk all the way around. Anything that uses, you know, being able to lift or press your own body weight is a useful thing to do. And it was something I actually talked about in an earlier video is that um, is kind of there's there's a sense of, you know, if you want to tackle the psychological aspect of it, too, there's there's a sense of of accomplishment and knowing and knowing and a sense of assuredness that you get from knowing that you can, you know, for instance, lift your own body weight, because there are a lot of people that, that can't do a pull up, you know, they can't lift their own body weight right. up off the ground and, and having that assuredness knowing, look, if I, for any reason need to lift myself up or need to maneuver out of something, I can actually do that. Or if I need to run a mile or two miles, I can actually do that as opposed to be being like, I'm a couch potato. I get stuck and I get winded walking up the stairs. Yeah. 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 And, and even, I mean, there, there are people who, who, you know, are, big and can't do a pull up you know uh, sure. who, who who you know they can big as they, in like lots of muscle mass lots of muscle yeah i don't mean just fat you know they, sure. but that the, they they have lots of muscle but they just like they don't understand the body mechanics of how to do it. they're big but they can't touch their toes right um or they can't run a mile you know mm-hmm. and um and or people who you know they're shredded but they can't do one of those those things either because right. they've really just trained for the looks of it and that kind of thing mm-hmm. so it, i mean you know, I have some friends who are, who are that way where it's like, you know, six pack and can bench press, you know, right. twice their body weight and couldn't run a mile to save their life, yeah. you know. Well, and, and for a long time, I mean, when I first started training, I was, you know, endurance wise, I was not not proud mm-hmm. of my endurance abilities. And it wasn't until I actually got into running Spartan races and really wanted to take a both aesthetic and functionally minded approach to my training that I really started training endurance and running. And in the course of like, I think it was like two months I took it from like being able to uh, run a pretty crappy one mile time to mm. being able to run like, you know, four and a half, five miles at a, I think it was five miles at a nine minute mile pace in the course nice. of about, about three, three months. Um, and, yeah. and again, that was the thing where it was like that feeling of, of accomplishment in, in I can do this. And if I ever need to run a good distance at a good pace, I can keep it up and do that without just, you know, doubling over and feeling like I'm dying after the first half right. mile. You know, right. and so that's something that that I think is really great for everyone to be able to to be able to do is at least, I don't know, what, what would you say a good just endurance benchmark of like every person should be able to do this provided they're ab- physically able to run. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think I think in my book I said basically if you if you can keep your your heart rate if you, if you can be at seventy um, percent of your uh, max heart rate mm-hmm. and maintain that for 45 minutes that's a that, that's good because that's yeah. you know short of because people are different sizes and different uh, abilities and stuff sure. so 
like distance isn't necessarily the the best benchmark, but if you can be at, at 70% of your your max heart rate for 45 minutes and feel good after that, I think that's a good thing because you know in talking to uh, some people who are you know really endurance experts, they go when you're really you know in training endurance, you train uh, you train first speed in in much you know you train intervals in very short amounts and then you you work in you know, like 80% of your training should be small, uh, you know, interval training and that kind of thing to uh, boost your your Is that uh, specifically capacity. like like high intensity interval training, like like short sprints, rest, sprint, rest. Sprint, yeah, rest. Like sprints and and resting and that kind of thing. And but then you should always incorporate uh, a good portion of uh, very. Uh, which that's that's yeah sort of very low um, heart rate training for a very extended period of time. So it's like you know if if I do sprints twice a week or something, and then do um, you know one long run a week, um, yeah. where it's like it's an hour and a half. But after I've run for an hour and a half at seventy percent of my heart rate, uh, my max heart rate, I should still feel like I could do another hour and a half of that. You know right. you should feel like you could do the whole thing again, um, and that's that's a good benchmark of. Am I training at a low enough intensity in those in those kind of things? So, yeah. So, for someone who is really interested in training their endurance, how would you recommend that they track their heart rate to know? You know, because a lot of people think you're going to go, well, seventy percent of my max. What's what's that? How do I find that? Sure. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it, it's super helpful if you can get a heart rate tracker. They're not the cheapest things in the world to get ones that are um, that really work. Um, but you can also just do your own, you know, old fashioned ten or twenty second count where you. Mm-hmm. Look at your watch, and you check your pulse, and you go, okay, where am I at? And where you're at is basically sort of the the easiest way to figure out is you go, you know, uh, 220 is is a zero year old's maximum heart rate. 220 minus your age, and then you do the percentages based off of that. Another great way um, is it Richard Maffetone. He's a, um, a running guru who's really good um, and an endurance uh, guru. Um, he trains, you know, people who do Ironman competitions and that kind of thing. He just goes 180 minus your age. Just do that, and that's mm. that's where that's your low intensity training gotcha. level. That's where almost that's where like most of your all of your endurance training um, should be. I think I misspoke earlier. I said something like 80 percent of your training should be intervals and that kind of thing. I didn't mean that. What I mean is when you're doing when you when you're gonna do intervals. Do intervals and do them at maximum intensity. Sure. And when you're going to when you're going to train, you know, do long runs and that kind of thing, do them low and slow, and and really take it really easy, so that you're not doing something in between and kind of not getting either the benefits of maximum effort or uh, long extended low intensity. So you would say like people who you know hop on the treadmill and like sort of do moderate intensity jogging for like 20 minutes are not getting the best use out of their time they could be. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's we love to do that. I love to do that. I love yeah. to go, you know what, I'm gonna do like, a, you know, I'm gonna do my, my weight training and then I'm gonna jump on the treadmill. I'm gonna do like a, you know, like a, a six minute mile, seven minute mile maybe. And then it's like, but, Come on, Kaiser. That does nothing for you. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you just either go all out, or dial it back and do a 15-minute mile at a at right. a lower heart rate just to um, to get some endurance uh, training in, and actually do three miles at 15 minutes a mile for you know. And so yeah. Interestingly enough, it was because yeah, I when I first started my you know trying to train up my endurance, it was a lot of trial and error, and I was doing exactly what we said not to do when I first started out, which was basically going for like trying to like just basically bring my one mile time down 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 um to try try to get you know doing you know seven seven and a half minute miles and then i found that if i just let myself go at like a 10 minute mile pace i could suddenly be adding like a half mile on to my max distance every you know two running sessions and it was just you know and then i'd alternate that with sprints and things like that and i found that that was a much much more effective uh training methodology if i was going to try to be increasing my max distance yeah to do the highest of high and the lowest of low, mm-hmm. rather than doing everything in the middle, is great. Yeah. Do high in, as you know, you're gonna die if you do it any longer intensity, and uh, and then easy. Yeah. And forget the middle. Who cares about that bit? Right. So, what would you say would be some exercises that people who are again people who 
might be training more with just an aesthetic mindset or people who are just wanting to get into functional training, what would be three, four exercises you'd recommend throwing into their routine or things you'd recommend them adding into their training protocol in order to help increase their functional strength and give them some real, you know, strength and toughness on top of their overall physique? <clears throat> Yeah, good question. Um, I think my wife just raised her hand like she's got an answer. What were, oh, okay. what were you thinking? Some of the correctional exercises are great. You have a mm. good foundation to build upon. Yeah. So like your, your abduction, mm -hmm. so your um, resistance band locks are mm -hmm. great to get those hips activated and the glutes activated. Yeah. So uh, my wife was a kin kinesiology major and um, so and has uh, she had a spinal cord injury and uh, so has struggled with major clonus in her um, in her legs and that kind of thing and, and numbness and stiffness and inability to move them and, and that kind of thing and so um, yeah she's really big on using resistance bands to help pinpoint and find those weaknesses mm -hmm. in um, you know because a lot of people have and I've had them too with major weaknesses along you know um, uh, your hips uh, and that kind of thing and then shoulders and and your posterior chain um, are big things so I think if there are just a couple of of exercises to put in yeah I mean I think adding you know resistance bands to to, to squats I mean mm -hmm. in general if you could only do like a few exercises with your whole life yeah if you do like I think clean and press is an awesome exercise uh, I love that squats front squats i totally love um they're hard to get the hang of um yeah. especially but if you once you get wrist headless, flexibility yeah yeah once you once you once you get it and you find something that's comfortable for you 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 don't unget it so it, it's yeah. really good um and i like you know just sort of uh again i think i think i think pull-ups are a wonderful exercise like they they do so much for you and they help yeah. just totally maintain your back health and if you do deadlifts and pull-ups for back like that's all you really need for to to maintain a, a healthy back and i think and then obviously you know stretching and that kind of thing um as well uh because that's something that that i think people who are looking who are into weightlifting and going i want a really you know great physique and that kind of thing it's really easy to and i think guys in general mm -hmm. it's easy to go uh, stretching that's not stretching is is a part of working out it's not yeah. like something you do after working out it's a part of working out right uh, it's like oh I didn't get my stretching in today but whatever um, you know your flexibility allows you to do things um, and progress so much faster than if you don't have have flexibility uh, yeah. and that kind of thing so, um, I am I have gotten much much stronger um, while by improving my flexibility uh, at a much faster pace than than I did when I did not have flexibility in my life. So I think those are things. Yeah, if I was to pin it down to a couple of exercises, pull-ups, clean and press, front squats, and messing around with kettlebells. That's great. Kettlebells, <laughs> Turkish get-ups. Um, uh, I love those, those things. Um, Turkish get-ups are awful and not fun, but they're really good. Like it really helps you get used to figuring out how, how your body's made to move and um, how you need to position yourself to, to maximize your um, the way that your muscles work and it'll show you a muscle imbalance like that, you know? Yeah. So on that note, I was actually going to mention something about, about stretching was uh, did you, I don't know if you happen to watch, I don't know how frequently you watch watch the show, but I don't know if you saw my recent episode specifically about stretching and static versus dynamic stretching. Yes. Yeah, uh, I did. Yeah. And how so yeah, I, I am a, a strong stretching advocate so long as people right. know when they should perform each kind of each stretching kind, to both yeah, yeah, prevent yeah, yeah, injury yeah. and improve Warm their performance. Dynamic and then if yeah. static everyone like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um right. You don't want to do a bunch of stretching, static stretching before you work out and that kind of thing, right. obviously. But um uh doing something to warm up and then doing something to uh, let the muscle release all that lactic acid buildup and uh, help lengthen the muscle fibers and that kind of thing is, is, yep. is super integral to, um, to maintaining proper muscular health. And, and it helps. It's great at you know, injury prevention and assuring good form um, right. with, with exercise as well. And speaking of injuries, you recently yeah. recovered from a pretty awful uh, fitness-related injury. Yeah, let's see. I think it was... Uh, it was like December of 
20... 16? I think December of 2015... No, 16, yeah. December yeah. of 2016, I tore my my pectoralis major, um, uh, and, and it took, you know, six months to heal. And still, occasionally when I'm bench pressing, um, I will feel like soreness and tightness there and that kind of thing. Um, but it's, it's something where, you know, I, I think one of the big things that we, especially like we get scared of certain exercises and we get scared of uh, certain movements and certain weights and that kind of thing if we have an injury and and a lot of times it moves us away from doing something we really need to be doing right um you know like how many people skip leg day or skip squats or or deadlifts bar none or deadlifts yeah yeah uh, i think squats are probably the single best exercise you could possibly do in the world and deadlifts are right there uh, as as well. And um, yeah, people go, oh, I don't want to hurt my back, so I don't want to do heavy deadlifts or anything like that. Well, doing heavy deadlifts is going to help you not hurt your back. So if you're you if know you're doing them uh, right, doing and that's and that's the thing right. where a lot of people have a problem is they jump right into these exercises without any like they'll maybe watch a YouTube video or before YouTube they just stand in a squat rack and go here it goes and give it a shot. And in those cases, yeah. since you're dealing with these big compound movements and some, you know, both omnidirectional and uh, more laterally based joints, if you're doing them wrong, especially with the weight you can't handle, you will you will permanently injure yourself like that, you know, with with these motions. But if you're doing them right and with the weight you can handle, you will strengthen yourself and injury proof yourself a lot quicker. Yeah, and and it's funny because you you know you, the the two used in this example is when everybody cites is squats and deadlifts. They don't want to do them because they're afraid they're going to hurt their low back. Or I'm going to blow out a knee. I'm going to hurt my low and back. Have you ever injured a knee or your back doing either of those? I have tweaked my back a few times doing deadlifts, which and then happen. I jump up and I what's that? That's which can happen. Yeah, and then I'll do pull ups, and you know, within a couple of days, I'm back to being able to do you know deadlifts again and that but kind my, of thing. My point um, is. The, injury, yeah. the 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 exercise you were doing where you most severely injured yourself is the one that every person on earth gravitates towards yes. because it's easy yeah. and, that's, and that's bench press. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that, and that was yeah. It was it was something where, you know, I didn't. Uh, yeah, it, it's everyone's favorite exercise. Right. And that's where I that's where I injured myself. Um, I was doing lots of low rep sets um, and. Uh, and I did not have a good, I didn't have a training partner and the person spotting me was just someone I picked at the gym and they weren't really spotting me. And, uh, you know, just hearing and feeling something tear is not, yeah. a pleasant <laughs> um, and it was funny, like it didn't even hurt that much. Um, but and maybe I don't know. I'm not an expert on human anatomy and stuff like that. But I know there's not like necessarily a lot of yeah, nerves down like nerves in your tendons or your muscles. Really, yeah. More so, of them. but I heard it happen. I felt it happen, and um, and I suddenly couldn't <laughs> push the weight back up. And um, so there. But you know, the the advice I got from the doctor who helped me sort of rehab it was, mm. he said, "All right, fine. Don't do anything with it for two weeks. Right. You know." Uh, but from then on, you've got to work it. You have to, you know, rehab it. And that's the thing that you know all these, um, you know, rehabilitation uh, people will do is they go, okay, if there's an injury there, you have to to get it working again properly. And so you are going to have to train it. You can, it's not just going to heal properly by you just leaving it alone. Right. And I think the thing that we forget is like if you've got bad knees, like it's probably because. <laughs> You need to be doing more stuff to strengthen everything around your knees. Yeah. Uh, which again, big caveat of learn how to do it properly right. and, and and use some do something that you can manage. But it's probably a situation where you should be doing squats if you've got bad knees, and if you've got a bad back, you should be doing deadlifts. Yeah. Um, properly now, and with a Oh, right way. Yes, and I would I would say if you're a person that's already dealing with bad knees or a bad back, consult someone first before Absolutely. going. I'm going to fix it with deadlifts consult and squats because 
you know, you can, you can have different, there are different kinds of injuries. There are things that are coming from like overuse and things like that, where, you know, trying to add more load onto them is not going to be beneficial in any way. Right. Um, sure. Yeah. There are performance injuries and stuff like that. And yeah. And, and the other big part of the caveat, I'm not a doctor. I'm not, a, right. I'm not an expert in, um, in rehabilitation and that kind of, and that kind of stuff. But, um, seek professional guidance because just not doing something to fix it is not a solution. Yeah. So, yeah. And, but also as a caveat to that, if you do injure yourself, like you said, I mean, cause one of the things that I think, especially guys, but a lot of people in general tend to do is they, they feel a little something not mm-hmm. feel right. And then they go, I'm going to, I'm just going to push through it and keep going. Um, and there's, there's, in my opinion, no faster road to severe injury than just pushing through a minor one in most yeah, cases. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to, to it's yeah, really helpful. Especially and, and I for, guess when it comes to like joints and things like that, when you're, <laughs> yeah, if I remember when I was, um, uh, working in, in a gym and, and, uh, you know, I was selling personal training and stuff like that years ago. And, um, uh, I thought there was two good things that this one personal trainer was was saying were their rules as far as good pain, bad pain, and yeah. stuff like that. Said pain, like dull, aching, throbbing pain in a muscle, good. Right. Sharp stabbing pain, bad. Yeah. Pain in a bone or joint, bad. Pain yeah. in muscles surrounding a bone or joint, yeah. good. <laughs> You know, and that's so that's like, something I always emphasize with with like shoulders for people is like if you, you know, if you're training and your shoulders feel stiff and tight and sore, that's great. Yeah. If you feel like you can't move them because it hurts at a certain point, that's really bad. <laughs> you, you've got you're like, oh, there's a sharp stabbing pain yeah. when I do this. Yeah, that's a shoulder impingement. You yeah. probably should fix it. What's going exactly. on? Yeah. And then I think that's the same thing for again, like uh, I've trained deadlifts with a lot of people who've never done deadlifts mm-hmm. before and they're like oh my back is hurting i don't think i should do this and i go where is your back hurting is it hurting in yeah. in the spine or on both sides of the spine right and they go oh both sides of the spine it's like worse right i'm like nope that's the muscle that's, that you've that's never your spinal erectors which are <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> that's called working so. your posterior chain yeah um but yeah and so and i think i mean i guess my my advice to people generally is if you're, you know, if you're bench pressing, you're like, yeah, I, I have, I get sort of a sharp shoulder pain when I bench. It's like, all right, then stop benching that way because you, right. it's not, that's not going to go away on its own by you continuing to do the exactly. same thing. There's, there's a form or a structural issue with the way that you're right. performing the exercise that needs to be addressed in order to prevent yourself from injuring yourself. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, if you're noticing sharp pain or pain in a in a joint or a bone or or, or something that doesn't feel like muscular uh, work, right, and stuff like that. And, and there's, there's a great value in learning the difference between those pains, not by intentionally injuring yourself, but sure. recognizing what is good pain. Yeah. And then you're more able to easily recognize that's bad pain when it's, when yeah. it's not good feeling. Um, because then, yeah, you need to correct a structural issue. You need to work that kind of thing before you, uh, try anything different. And I, and I, again, I think with all, especially with these big compound movements and stuff like that, and, well, in isolation, with all movements, mm-hmm. until you really get the form of the movement down, go easy, go light. You know, right. um, you probably need some weight. If in most weight training things, you need some amount of weight to get the the movement down properly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like it's really hard to squat with like. No, I mean, that's not a bad example. But there are some movements that are hard to do if you don't have a little bit of. It's really hard to do a front squat if you yes. get like no weight because it helps to have something there to, to hold the weight and yeah. to hold the bar in place and that kind of thing. But, um, but you also should take it easy until you really get the movement down. Right. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, and, and just motion path, motion path, motion path form is incredibly important. And that's yeah something, you know, that, that I, I, I'd like to throw in there and emphasize is functional fitness can often be corrupted to mean form doesn't matter. And that's not at all what it means. You know, a lot of people are like, well, I'm, no. I'm just training functionally. I don't, I don't care, you know, how how well as long as I'm as long as I'm moving the weight. That's really what matters. And it's like, no, no, no. You gotta, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when when you're dealing with 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 functional movements and when you're dealing with things, basically, when you're dealing with stuff that's that's heavy and compound, form is all the more important than if you're, you know, yeah. you're not gonna screw yeah, yourself up too bad by executing a bicep curl improperly. 
you're going to really screw yourself up badly by doing, you know, a clean and press with, with yeah. jacked up form. An overhead snatch improperly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Functional fitness is about using your body the way it's made to move. Um, and so if you're not doing that just because you go, I, I'm just going to do whatever it takes to move the weight, right. you're not doing functional fitness. Yeah. 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 And that's, and that's just a, an important defining term for for people that might not might not understand really what what all goes into it yeah yeah well thank you so much for talking to me and enlightening both me and my viewers on you know sort of the finer points of both injury prevention recovery and functional fitness in general you want to give one more plug for your book or maybe some social media shout outs anything you want to do for yourself there sure i'm you know Twitter, Instagram, everything is at Kaiser Johnson. Um, and uh, my book is Grit and Glory, Cross-Training Your Body and Soul. Uh, actually, I actually have another book uh, coming out uh, next year, um, which is more about uh, nutrition and and that kind of thing. And uh, TBD on the title of that, but it'll be linked once uh, once it's actually out you know, from my author page on Amazon and that kind of thing. So um, Grit and Glory, Cross-Training Your Body and Soul check out my other book when it comes out too so fantastic thank you so much for joining us guys that is it for today's video thank you so Thanks much for, for watching me. make sure to leave a like down below if you enjoyed it and of course subscribe to this channel because i've got new content coming out all the time give kaiser johnson a look as well and of course leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts and any questions you'd like me to answer to help you train smarter and look better